After meeting twice in the league and once in the cup last season, we're now facing the fourth match between Dorking and Eastleigh in under a year. I didn't catch that. Oh, Did fucking you try again? hell, you little Siri. <laughs> Dorking came from. I don't know how to respond to that. Oh my god, fuck off. Dorking came from behind to snatch a point I and. To respond to that. Jesus Christ, stop it. Dorking came from behind to snatch a point in the league, while Eastleigh recovered from a goal down to knock the Wanderers out of the FA Cup. And then, there was a New Year's Day fixture, notable for the fastest goal ever scored in the history of football. Possibly. The so-called Spitfires were three up inside 12 minutes and I broke a rib picking up a football. It's easily the darkest day in the history of bunch of amateurs and, perhaps, football as a whole. Except, of course, for Eastleigh fans and people who don't like me. So, Mark certainly knows what to expect from today's game, even if they do have a new manager. Just expecting a fucking fast start. Don't give opposition a sniff. Last week was the obligatory, and I'm not, you know, York, I thought you were excellent. You know, that tiny chain where we took off, you know, an extra four inches of Dan and more I had to slot in there, literally the only reason they got anything out of that game. We were excellent, we were aggressive, it was a difficult team to play at the time. They're back to front on a small pitch, it ain't easy, right? Well, I thought we was excellent against York and we should have gone on and won it, right? And then just remember, Woking, we went there, we just gave them that, we just had a bloody nose for six minutes, that's all it takes. It's a boxing match, you know, the blokes, if you're not expecting a win maybe or whatever, and all of a sudden the bloke's bleeding after four minutes, someone fucking bot, you go in there, didn't you, start hitting the and I felt last week like they, they smelt a bit of blood. Could get a slow start. If for some reason they just go full press, I've no idea how they do it, then Maka go in and make a, an extra man. If not, really get in support of Jason for them little knockdowns because we will go in direct at times when we need to. And then you lot, don't go direct when you don't need to. Use it, use it as and when you need to. That's not a problem, I back you. Okay? All right, boys, good stuff. <laughs> We had a good season last season, and then we let ourselves down at the end of the season. We could have picked up wins when I thought oh, we, we should have picked up wins. And then I think we got too confident in ourselves for, for the promotion push. Hard start to the season. Lee Bradley went. Some of us gutted about him. Top man, top man with the fans, but we, we just haven't been getting the results. Well, at the start, I was, I was happy. But then now we're, we don't even have a manager at the moment, but I'm hoping I'm hoping it will go well, but it's not the worst thing, I don't think. Oh, we've got like a temporary manager. He's all right. One older shot 3-0, so it's all right, yeah. We're on a downward spiral, spiral almost, and with high expectations this season, it's, it's not good enough to start like that in, in a very competitive league. Right, boys. We're going to go and win the midfield battle. We're going to try and create these big 1v1s out wide. Pryor's going to nod a few in, but Shane's going to fucking pick up some seconds. We're going to try and dominate from the outset today. We'll have loads of ball, lads. Enjoy it. When we get loads of ball, just enjoy passing. Wear them down, lads. Wear them Let's down. The band, boys. Let's give them a bloody nose first, 10 15. Get the fans straight on our fucking side straight away. Okay, boys? Do we proud today, please? Go okay? On, okay. Come on. Dorking are struggling for form, and Mark is predicting a direct and physical game from Eastleigh. So we're not going into this one with any expectations of slickness. No! A loose pass from Jason Pryor gives Aidan Barlow a chance for an early break, and he feeds Enzo Boulderwine. George, open up! God, God, should get claws and down. No, no, put out! Run him, no, run him! Run him straight! Run him straight! Against a team like Eastleigh, Mark wants his side to play out quickly and rarely go long. And that will put a lot of pressure on the wing backs, in this case, Nile McManus and Seb Bowerman, as they've got to get the ball out of the Dorking territory. But as Seb's crossing the ball to presumably Nick Halloway, the benches are more concerned with an injury to Eastleigh defender Lee Hudson, who's in some real pretty shit now, man. He's fat, he's, mate. He's, he's fat. Weren't bad there. He's gonna need a physio, mate. Later on, but you can see him screaming, man. Just, just go, on. go on. Let him on for. Let him do his own fucking right. job, lads. Fuck me. Ain't a fucking cinema. Yeah. Let him do his fucking job. An attempt to secure the ball leads to a twist of the ankle, and it's game over, man, for Hudson. Game over. Quality! 
Quality son! They're bring on Carter now. He's, he's only missed last week he got stuck in a fucking accident. Midfield danger man Charlie Carter, who scored twice against Dorking last season, will replace the injured Hudson. You got the watch, haven't you, mate? What we've got so far? Ten minutes if we're ten minutes if we're losing. One minute if we're, if we're winning. That's the rule. That's it, Gaffer. Look, Gaffer. The centre forward's gone left back. Oh yeah. I just hey. think centre forward's gone left back. The bench is surprised to see a striker drop into defence, so we're just going to text Mark and head scout Anthony and make sure they didn't get that wrong. Whatever they're up to, they're in behind the Wanderers. Who didn't go in with him? No. No, that side. Dawkins' first threat of the day comes from one of Josh Taylor's medium slash long throws. In truth, the game is fairly lacklustre, and we're still waiting for Anthony the Scout to come back and confirm who has moved to left back. Although he has pointed out that the injured player was called Hodson, not Hudson. It's all of those aliens jokes earlier on have been voided. But we're going to own them. One thing that is a recurring joke is Dorking's so-called long throw, which is a callback to last season, when attacking set plays did the Wanderers more harm than good. And Charlie Carter breaks through and just needs to beat Harrison Mayle. Lol, good luck with that. James, oh, that happened three times! Three times! Gaffer's concerned about the attacking set plays turning into a defensive nightmare. Step on a big diag if you want it. Step. Dorking are in the markets for a positive spell of possession and perhaps a decent chance. And they came to the right place. Niall, there you go now, underneath the winger, remember. Deliver! Deliver! Oh, he's missed it. Jason. Oh. Pryor hits the post and Seb blazes over. Not ideally, isn't it? Both fullbacks have gone, pretty much. They're the balls. Their best moments have come from our dead balls. That's what I'm worried about. As it happens, both teams should be worried about how this long throw is going to turn out. We need someone on the edge. Yeah, someone on the edge. Yeah, that's it. So just get Mac on the edge. Ah, oh. Fucking hell, man! George Langston turns into Hacksaw Jim Duggan in his efforts to stop Jason Pryor. And just like Nick Patrick, the referee acts like he didn't see anything. Not being funny, yeah? Are we thinking about are we thinking about going short from the throw? Yeah, we, we, we are what, set for it as well. Yeah, because what I'm saying, they've, they've, they've won the first contact, right? Charlie Carter is a danger man in the Eastleigh midfield, so it makes sense that Luke Moore wants to keep him quiet. Question is, how far is Moro willing to go to achieve his goal? Oh, he's no. out. He's out, is. That's his knee. Who's that? Moro. I think he's twisted his knee. Yes, but here's the thing, yeah, here's the thing. But where's Baz? Bob! Bob! You slaughtered this bloke. Listen, you can either score or put it on Jason's head, but do either one early. Luke Moore trudges off, knowing it might be some time before we see him again. Bobby Joe, meanwhile, grasps his gaffer's advice. Go on, Bob. And touch him, yeah, touch him. Go on, Bobby, go on, mate. Go on, yeah, D. And don't. Oh. <laughs> Bobby, in this game, you always want it there. Don't look there or there. Look there. Don't look around. Just go there. Bobby, you'll have it. Bobby, you'll have it. Go on, Bob. Get there. Get there. Mark's plan creates a chance. Sadly, the ball lands in front of, well, Niall McManus. Eastley's response is swift as Joe McDonald's goal kick bemuses the Dorking defence and gives Aidan Barlow a chance to advance. Oh, we've got to have that. Trip through, no one's won the first contact. Ken Barlow sets up Charlie Carter, only for Carter to come up against safe hand solo in the Dorking goal. Relax, George. Spin it again. Josh, George, Josh. 
The balls to Bob are getting Wanderers up the pitch, but like a keyboard with a broken shift button, they're not capitalising. Must have done that. I must have used that before. Yeah. Oh, good boys, relax. Relax. Harrison, well done, son. Yet again, Harrison, unbelievable, son. No, I don't underestimate shit like that. Come on! No more, no more long throws, I'm saying. All their best moments have come from our throws. Okay. So here's the, here's the mental bit for you, right, okay? Here's the mental bit, okay? It wouldn't matter to me if they got one off the arse, we'll win 3-1, okay? So forget that, yeah? I thought that Harrison's done a brilliant job for you there. Exceptional keeping. Stands up, that's proper keeping, right? Proper save, right? Do me a favour, go and win it for Harrison, get him a clean fucking sheet, do me a favour, lock the game up. Here's the thing, Baz, believe it or not, I know you've done that six yard box run, right? For, see, for me, I'd rather not. I think this game is about not conceding. Everyone feel fine, Jace? Messages, defensively, <coughs> narrow, pipers in front, don't fuck about with looking for them balls over the top and then use two keep making the box, okay? All right? Mark is generally happy with the first half performance and definitely does not want his team going long. So as long as they stick to the game plan, they should be fine. They certainly seem on script in the opening move of the second half. Great shout, Baz. Oh. Forward! Take him on, Bob. Bobby Joe Taylor is Dawkins' focal point in attack right now, and he looks to make life difficult for Enzo Boulderwine, who's definitely an attacking player in a left-back or left-wing-back position. We do think this is an interesting tactical match-up, but we're not going to claim the outcome is a high-quality match, especially when Chris Maguire is apparently taking shooting tips from Norm McManus. <laughs> Sadly, Josh Taylor also seems to have been attending Niles School for Shooting. Head up, head up! Oh, oh, oh crap. Harrison! Harrison! Keep playing! Quickly breaks down the left side ten minutes into the half and with Jake Taylor loitering on marks on the edge of the box, easily have a grand opportunity to take the lead. Edge, 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 edge. The gaffer believes that long balls up the pitch will come straight back at Dorking, and that will give Harrison Mail a much harder day's work, as evidenced here. Top side, isn't it? No, 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 no. Still, no matter how well Harrison does at shot stopping, if he's not playing the ball as requested by the gaffer, he's going to get a clip round the ear. Tony! Play! Don't stop going long! Too slow, lads! Now you've got to! Jake's coming to you! Harrison! Get up, Baz! Baz! Good, good! Yeah, it must be boys, move up for Alex. Cal. Bass! It's too slow! With a fraction over 10 minutes to go, a break in the deadlock doesn't seem forthcoming, even when Jake Taylor finds Carter at the back post. The game is clearly dying out, with the Dorking manager desperately trying to get his players to show some urgency. Dan! Death down again! Lads! Strong finish! Come on! Mark's encouragement seems to be working, as Dorking puts a move together that more than troubles the Eastley defence. Spin him! Spin him! Spin him! Spin him! Oh! Oh!
Jason Pryor is pulled down just inside the penalty area by Nigel Atangana, and the referee immediately points to the spot. Is that a red? It's a red card. Is that a red card? No, it's actually playing the ball down, With around eight minutes left to play in a game of few chances, Jason's penalty, should it go in, will surely be the match winner. So just a little bit of pressure there. Follow up! Oh, he never goes that side. That's a wank penalty, mate. That's so bad. He should never do that, man. Jason Pryor truly is one of the most reliable penalty takers we've seen. And an uncharacteristically weak effort is pounced upon by Joe McDonnell as the score remains frustratingly goalless. Especially frustrating for us because we're trying to make an interesting show here. Back in the Dorking penalty area, the play is still moving a bit too slowly. Too slow! You've got to tuck in now. Seb, stay there, he's looking for you. Seb, 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 Seb! <laughs> Travel if we can, mate. Go on, go on. Tone, the problem is how slow it is! Speed it up! Charlie Carter is one of Eastley's best players and he's leaving it late to add to his tally against the Wanderers. Right at the death, Mark's point about going long is proven as the ball comes straight back, leading to a handball and free kick. Got a foot in, foot in, foot in cow, foot in cow. The thing is here, the referee is not pointed to his whistle and the Wanderers think they've got time to set up, even though they, they haven't. Whoa, 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 whoa. Have we done this? Hey, hey, hey. What the fuck? Oh my days, we're lucky there. Jake Taylor is needlessly offside and Wanderers survive what would have been the most embarrassing ending since, well, probably the last time Kitman Mitch went on a date. Yeah. Cheers, Rich. Cheers, mate. Cheers, pal. Cheers, boys. Jace, you have to fucking put your foot through the ball, man. Fuck me. It's fucking not good enough, Jace. That is, a penalty taker does their best penalty, and if he saves it, you go, well done, mate. You don't second guess yourself, you don't second guess him. Jase, you've been around long enough. You put your foot through a one nil winner's job done. You lot at the back tell me what you're waiting to happen. I know about football, just to be fucking clear. What are you waiting to happen when you all walk out like this? And you take your time. What, what, are, you wait, what, what, what are you waiting for? Tell me, what phase of play are you waiting for? The phase of play where you can't be bothered, and they're going to give it to two strikers who are just going to lose their battles or lose the half battles and then the opposition just get on the ball. We do not celebrate a point. The second half weren't good enough and you lot have to take responsibility for when we start going direct. We should be going direct about 20% of the time. Please remember that, right? That's fine because there'd be situations we have to go spot, yeah, and direct. That's what we have to do, right? For whatever reason, but 80% and when it's there, we play, that's what we do, okay? We are lucky to get a point, I'm telling you, okay? Not over the moon, boys, not over the moon. See you Tuesday. If you'd like to see more from Bunch of Amateurs, you can join us on YouTube memberships where the episodes are two to three times as long as this. And in supporting us there, you're gonna help the show continue. But if you don't fancy that, please do leave a comment and hit the like button because that really helps us to reach more people.